now it's recording. Can you hear me? Does it, do I sound okay? I sound fine? I'll just, um, yeah, now people can hear me too. <laughs> so I sound fine? Do I look good? I, I mean that as an honor. I mean, do I, on the, on the video, do I... Good, good. Okay. I'm just going to do a quick talk. You don't even have to notice notice me or not. I really, this is really only a demo, a demo talk. So, exactly, exactly. Well, oh, that's that's on slide four. So, and you can ask questions. Um, all I'm, what I'm talking about is just the AV system that we're going to use right now. So, I'm just going to give a, give a slight, just an overview of basically what we're doing. So um, I'll start off with the current AV situation, which is what they're using um, at open source conferences as well, like, like linux.conf.au at the moment. And I'm pretty sure in 2014. So uh, based on software called DV Switch, which is essentially a video mixing program. It's a software video mixer. So it allows you to switch between multiple video sources. Um, it's only, um, it's also, they use a back-end software with DV Switch, this video mixer called Vapor. Um, it's written by a guy called Carl Carsten, who records videos for the US PyCon. Um, he uses DV Switch in this software uh, to review and upload the video. Um, he wrote it himself. It's really difficult to set up and configure. It's unless you actually have him do it. So... That's kind of a negative. Um, it's currently videos are limited to 480p, 4 to 3. Um, that's okay, but it's getting now like you know, being that YouTube supports 16 to 9 resolutions, it's kind of the bottleneck is based on DV format. So they're using the DV format, so they're using DV cameras, um, which are limited to... Uh, their, their input resolution is... It's, it's 720 by 576, but with, with overscan and stuff, they, they, they say 480p, basically. So, And when you upload it to YouTube, it just rounds it to 480p anyway. So, um, so that, that's basically the Firewire-based cameras that... And because the architecture of DV switch is based on the DV video format, which these Firewire cameras actually output, uh, that's the limiting factor. So it's the hardware and the and the software. I, it's not really the hardware, I suppose, because you can get HDV cameras. I'd say it'd probably be DV switch would be the the biggest bottleneck, but it's really good software for what it does. Like it is actually a good video mixer. I mean, we're even using it right now, but with HDMI cards. So because um, works essentially um, and as I said it based on the DV format with PC capture devices that use a VGA input which is analog video but it's also a very becoming now an old format you know an old standard now that you know new devices like you have smart devices like phones and stuff and they have HDMI so it's kind of getting a bit a uh, bit long in the tooth um, we were Basically, we're st still based on DV switch, so as, as I mentioned. Um, we will be using D GST switch, which is essentially a replacement that um, that Tim Ansell's working on. It's kind of very... I looked at the source code the other day, and it's a bit rough. So um, I would like to use that. Otherwise, there's another software we're looking at a gal as called Gallicaster, which we could modify to do the same thing, and it's more mature. Um, I should have mentioned that in there. Um, we're using HDMI interfaces. Our camera is HDMI based. Um, this is basically running into HDMI, so basically you can get up to six, you get 16 to 9 videos up to 1080p resolution with that, which is good. Um, it also allows the use of more, you know, like basically you could give a talk with your smartphone or give a demo from your smartphone, basically if you had a HDMI out on it. So it's really really handy in that re that respect. Uh, the Blackmagic capture cards we're using, uh, they're about $140, but they allow, um, y and you do need a PC with PCI Express slots, but they're really flexible cards. They're like, 
you know, they offer all kinds of resolution options. Um, the one, the card I've got even has an SDI input. SDI is a professional video format, which allows basically uh, the the pro video people. All the cameras have like an SDI output. It's essentially the, you know, a pro a pro interface, linking interface. Um, but uh, these cards are really, I mean, the testing we've done, they're really good at what they do. They're really great at capturing video. Um, they're very reliable as well. They have good Linux drivers, even though they're proprietary like the NVIDIA drivers are, but they're well maintained and they're very stable. So um, There is another option. Uh, Tim Ansel is working on a um, HDMI to USB interface, but if it's anything like the, um, there's another similar device made by a company called Epahan, which is a VGA to USB device. Uh, it comes up as a video for Linux device, like a webcam, but it has a lower, basically its frame rate is limited by the USB 2 interface, so you could do, you can capture 1080p video, but it's going to be basically dropping frames, so, because it's essentially a very, basically the bandwidth is not there, so yeah, USB three, and that's um, basically. But the hardware that Tim's working on is only has a USB two interface because he's building it as like it's just basically an FPGA. So he's using a FPGA development board for that. Um, but it's it's okay for ca capturing slides, which is similar to this VGA to USB device, which is what it's good for as well. Even though it it drops frames as well, it's it's good for static things like slides. Um, so, and also the back end, um, like I mentioned Vapor, which is the solution that's used now in a lot of conferences, which is used for reviewing the, s it, essentially what it does is it schedules, it reviews, um, when the video is finished, you can review the video. So just say you had, um, basically, you know, you had like a minute at the front of the video that you didn't want in the video, you basically trim the video to the to where the talk starts and where the talk ends. It also allows you to go through the actual video and make sure that there's nothing in the video that, you know, it looks fine before you actually upload it. Uh, then what it does is it handles uploading to places like YouTube and Blip TV and stuff. Uh, Matterhorn, oh, excuse me, yeah. Yeah, Matterhorn's written in Java, but it uses a web interface. Um, it's used by a lot of universities, like uh, the University of um, California. Um, is it? U I think it's UCLA. I think it is Los Angeles. So, University of California and Los Angeles use it. A uh, few. There's some in Germany that use it. There's one in the University of Alberta, I believe. Like it's a HTML front end. Um, yeah, I. It's basically a, it's it's not Flash-based, it's, well, it does have a Flash-based video player for the reviewing, uh, but it is just a HTML interface. You can schedule talks, so basically you say, on this date and time, I want a, you know, I want to record a talk, and then they, they have the main server, then they have the concept of what's called a capture agent, which is essentially a, a client that sits on, sits on a computer connected to the HDMI capture interface, like, like this PC here, uh, and it'll record the, um, it'll basically, on that date and time, it'll record the video. Uh, once it's done that, um, depending on the options, it'll either upload it immediately to the server, or it'll wait to a specified time and upload it to the server. That That's configurable, depending on the capture agent. Um, the, the advantage, obviously, of having it just one big batch of videos being uploaded at a certain time is that it's not instead of like on the fly uploading is that obviously if you have a limited resources system or something you don't want it basically hammering away in the background while you're still recording videos so you say like at six o'clock please upload the videos then so it'll do that um so yeah and and it's basically it's designed for lecture capture opencast metacorn is designed for you know le lecture capturing so uh, it, and it was written by people who needed to capture lectures, which are universities, written by people like that for the specific purpose of scheduling and um, scheduling and uploading video. Um, they have their own, we're going to, we configured it so it uploads to YouTube, because um, it has a plugin that allows uploading a video to YouTube, but it does the same thing that Vapar does, where it, you can trim the video and review it, you can do a number of options, re-encode the video, etc., add in 
add in subtitles. You can, you can add in like subtitles or captions to the video, a title, a title page, um, like an in what they call an intro and an outro, which is essentially you know before the start of the video show something and at the end of the video show something. That's right. That's right. Yeah, and it, they've already thought of that because that's things that they needed when they were doing cap, um, basically lectures and stuff as well. Um, it's very easy to set up and configure. Essentially, it's you download a tarball and you basically build it, and then you like you just set it, set an option, a conf few options in the config file. You know what what host it's running on and stuff. You know the and then basically you start it, you start it up it presents the interface so it's really it's all it's pretty self-contained it's just self-contained in a directory uh, and it's very well maintained I mean they're basically developing it all the time um, they're moving in like the current stable release is 1.4.0 and uh, they're moving up to 1.4.1 which as far as I know is really mainly bug fixes but um, it's it's being like at the m at this time. It's actually being maintained since like when it was launched in I think late two thousand nine when it came out. So and it's always had more features added to it as. Um, and that's pretty much what we're using like for the back end. And then of course the front end is at the moment will be DB switch. And and do you have any anyone does do you have questions or anything like that? Um. That's correct, yes. Um, we've also thought about, like, um, at, at PyCon in Hobart there, where they were doing dual lectern for the lightning talks, we've already thought about how to do that as well. And that's a case of, we just get two PCs, so we can just transplant, instead of buying four cards, which is what we'd need to do, because we need an extra camera and an extra, extra um, PC capture, we can just stream the video from another we can just nick a PC from another room temporarily and then use it to stream that video to the main main capture PC so they only do one video stream that's correct yes yes they well, you can absolutely I mean this 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 PC is a, it's a it's in a case bigger than it needs to be but it's a, it's a micro ATX board so you can pop it in a smaller case that's what we um, and the hardware it's just a core i3 so it's not really I mean it's it's okay I mean it it can handle running Matterhorn running DV switch and everything on it while what it's doing right now so yes he is he's doing the switching using the DV switch software so he can absolutely yes Yes, pretty much. Um, of course, the camera that we're using would replace it with whatever camera we're hiring. Of course, yes. What chances of that being a problem? Uh, very good. I mean, the cameras, the, the pro cameras that were hired for LCA 2013 had had um, HDMI outputs on them as well. So, pretty much anything made in the last few years, I mean, since probably about 2007, will have HDMI out on it. Yes. Oh, you, do you want to? Um, if you can come up. Okay. Can I also say? Can I also say that? Uh, yes, uh, that uh, we can insert uh, the uh, the motherboard that I've got in my machine. Does uh, has two PCIe slots and two PCI slots. We can have the PCI slots for uh, FireWire, and uh, it's again it's a micro ATX board. We can have those for FireWire, and so that if we do need to go over there and switch over to FireWire, it's easy peasy, Japanesey type thing. So it, it can be, it can handle both, um, but preferably with the HDMI. The advantage of using HDMI is that even though we're using DV switch, which limits it at the moment to like a SD resolution, we can still capture the high resolution streams from each of the 
like we can store those for later use. So we, if we want to re-edit something or create a high definition version. High def at standard def because of um, though the advantage of course of using HDMI is that essentially it's what we would like to do as well is remove we can inject audio into the cable so we could rem remove have just one cable running to um, the computer as well which is a that mic's going into that receiver there so and that's going through the mixer and then going into into the PC so That's correct, yes. And we'll yes, yeah, which which would most likely be supplied by the by the uh, the conference venue. So and the with that audio, how are we mixing that audio into the audio? Is that going Uh no, that's just going into the audio interface of the it's going into the line in. Um though theoretically we could inject that audio into the HDMI and just use the black magic card as well. The advantage of that is that it would be perfectly synchronized with the with the video so it also reduce the amount of cables we need to use as well so, so what more needs to be like what are you happy with at the moment? Um we're not happy well I mean as much as we like TV switch it basically it's the limiting factor at the moment but it does the job so well that um, that's the reason why Tim Ansell's writing a replacement called GST Switch, which uses GStreamer in place of DV, so you can use any kind of format, but it's not very mature at the moment, so... Um, well, essentially, the essentially, I suppose it's more the performance issues that Tim's experiencing with it, that's the issue. Um, it does, as far as I'm aware, it does what we need to do. It just has performance issues. It's C. It's written in C. Um, DV Switch is written in C++. And this I, I don't know why they just didn't kind of just grab DV Switch and then kind of just rip the DV bits out of it and kind of replace it. Maybe it was just... No, I, no, but we could find out. I mean, that's something that Tim knows a, a lot more about because he's basically getting... He's hiring some guy to to write it for him, so... But uh, that's the reason they're not using it right at this minute because it has... Um, the option B is also um, use software called Gallicaster which shows those two separate... shows the two separate high-def screens but it has no switching module which is something I was looking at as well as like adding... but it uses GStreamer for the in the background so in theory we could make a switching plugin that just basically allows us to do what DV switch does right there. So do you think that that is just any audio, yeah, that's correct, yes. Um, do you have uh we're keeping the, the plan is to keep them as save them separately, but also save the combined video as well. So the combined video is what would go out and be uploaded up to up to YouTube. That's the, the high def stuff that we keep, the, the individual streams, it's good to keep those because they're the original masters and we can use them. That's right, yeah, and we can we could re-edit them or, so, or things like that. So, and then also we also have the high def video. And that's the advantage of using HDMI as well. We get nice, clean, high def video as opposed to um, the solution they're using at the moment, which uses a twin packed 100, which is essentially a firewire VGA to firewire capture device, and it's it's okay if you use it keeping it at 1024 by 768, but it, it is a bit muddy looking as well. Like the picture is not exactly, and of course it has the problems that VGA would suffer from, in, you know, interference and stuff, long cable lengths. Uh, Eight hundred dollars each, too, but we do have them. Well, Linux Australia owns them, I should say. Yeah, and the twin packs also. There's a number of problems that issues that come about with using them. Just things like the, you need to have them. They can be a bit of a bother at times. So they're temperamental. They're very. Uh, yeah, they they will 
um, like if you reset them, they'll just default back to their default settings ev even after you set them up. Like, so it, that might, won't be the VGA input. It'll actually be the because um, it has composite input on it as well. So th and that could happen midway through a talk, and basically, you know, you'd have to go around fiddling with things all the time. Good thing about this is that this is within the PC that we're controlling. We've already pre-set up because it's they're basically you just tell it what resolution you want, and it'll stay in that resolution. So it it's not like the and also the twin packs also you need another PC sitting at the lectern to actually plug the FireWire interface into. Um, and then, of course, you've got the associated connectivity issues. One of the biggest bugbears is having two PCs is networking between them. And sometimes you might lose your network connection. And then, of course, you lose your video stream. But um, Oh, yes, yeah, Matterhorn, yes, yes. Um, it, the the capture agent will still capture the video. Um, it's just it because because it basically just uses a HTTP interface to speak with it. If it gets four oh fours, it's just going to just sit there and continue to until the connectivity is restored. It'll just sit there waiting to upload the video. So it'll just keep trying to. They they're stored locally. It has not if yeah if connectivity to the server is lost, the capture agents will use whatever instructions they were told the le their last instructions. Um, of course, yeah. Sorry. It's yeah. It's basically up on uh, up on Tim's GitHub. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it is because I know because software like Gallicaster doesn't have severe performance issues like that. So, and it's something yeah, I th it's something to do with basically and it drops frames apparently as well. So it's dropping. Not really. No, we've had brief looks at it, but it. I had a look at. I had a bit of a look at the GitHub repository yesterday just to make you know just to go over it again just to make. No, no, and no, but why is that I mean, I did try to build it the other day, so oh, yeah, that's another thing I have to that's right, I need it. that's one thing that i I need to um it needs g streamer one point oh as well, but that's that's not a problem, that's just uh, I mean Oh, that's right. That's what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That's that's actually the reason. Um, at the moment, GStreamer 1.0 does not have the sort the deck link source, which is the Blackmagic card source, in what? it yet. It's. I know why he's having issues. Why? He's probably trying to do something like um, Granola. G G. Okay. He's okay. trying to use a, a feature of. 1.0. Oh. Rather than input switching. Oh, okay. That could be where the performance issues are coming from. Yes. So that okay. Might be we'll, have to, we'll have a look at the source code again, but it's um. But um, yeah, that was one of the reasons. Actually, that was the main reason. Um, at the moment, 1.0 doesn't have the um deck link source, which is for the black magic cards. Because the cards are called basically the series of cards is called deck link, so that's why um, it doesn't ha have that um, that plug in just yet. Which is that for some reason there's a reason why it was held back. Um, like it's still in 0 0.10, but it's not in 1.0 yet. So uh, the developer is moving towards. There is someone actually working to make it. Apparently, it doesn't. You know, they're having troubles getting it working with 1.0. So that was the reason as well. The deck link cards aren't manufactured in Australia, but they are designed in Australia. Yeah, by, there is no G 
in G stream are 1.0, but in 0 0.1, yeah, that there's yeah, that's what we're using. Well, and if you're using anything like 1.0 or 5, it's the G-stream or 0 0.1 doesn't update. Right? But we could go over there and we could nick their uh, GUI. Yeah, we could nick their GUI and just rewrite it for yeah. 0.1 in the background. Yeah, yeah, and that's and then then we'd be all we'd be fully fully HDMI, but well fully HD as well. We could upload the um, the video up to um up to YouTube, which is which is simple really. It's just a case of just you know, just recording the video as 1080 and then upload using the up the upload plugin in um, Matterhorn. So, oh no, we there's there's a pl I mean, it depends on what we're supplied with at BCEC. So. We most likely will have handhelds, so we can go around and get, you know, ask, get people to answer, ask questions and stuff like that. But there will be lapel mics for those that need it, etc. Exactly. Yeah. This is a cheap and dirty solution. This is something like a. No. No. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. I understand. It's yeah, and it's the software, and that's been the biggest limiting factor at the moment for moving away from DV cameras. So, but DV switch just does its job so well. I mean, you know, even we admit that it does its job really well for what it does. It's and uh, there is still active development on it. I mean, I'm using using a, ma a master version from the from the Git repository at the moment because it has extra things like it can you can remote control it, so you can actually tell it to record from a, another PC. Um, not it not its internal architect. No, not its internal architecture. Um, it allows it allows the now to use RTSP streams, but they still have to be DV video over RTSP. So that's. And yeah, internally, it's, it's it only works on 720 by 576 resolution, so it's that's just hard coded into the, into its architecture. It's something they can't really, unless they pull all that out and rewrite it or something. So. Um. Well, yep. Go on. Right. The main reason for going with HD is because um, FireWire is becoming increasingly. Yeah. It'd be nice not to be locked into a set resolution to, to go over there and to so that you can have high resolution files and but DV locks you into certain a certain resolution And um, also, also HDMI is just so much nicer to work with than VGA. I mean, it's just like it's pretty much you know nice clean digital signal that you can just and most devices support it these days. That exactly, yeah, yeah. So. The Mac issue. What's the Mac issue? Uh, well, the newer, the newer, um, like if you saw, um, if you saw like Ryan Stewart's Mac, 
it has HDMI out on it now. Like the MacBooks now have a HDMI port on the side of them. So, uh, I mean, the MacBook Pros do. No, well, apart from that, it's um, we would have to. It's, that's something that basically we'd still have to have adapters for. I mean, unless we actually had like a Display Port capture card or something, a mini Display Port capture card. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The other thing is, is that why don't a lot of the speakers should carry them? I know that they don't, but they should. And no, I mean, there should only be about three. Let's see. Okay, you need one for uh, one for yeah. Anyway, so there should only really be three adapters that we need at most, uh, plus. Per room, because of the different. Of course, yeah. All people forget to give them back, and they just put them in their, no, put them in their bag, and it's the same thing. I mean, it's not pinching; it's just forgetting. Just missed our talk. Unless we, yeah, unless we. Uh, we have we have done a lot of that actually. It's just nice. it's just um, this this was basically an interim to basically show that we could actually record video. So <laughs> um, without doing any, I mean, the plan obviously would be to have something HD, but um, but we could use DV switch in the back. And in the meantime, that's basically what we're trying to show, I suppose. We have tried to go over there, and we have tried to. To, we have mucked around with GStreamer, and we have tried to create GUI fr uh, front end GUI. Yeah, but that's the point. It, it's it's a lot of these things are kind of, for example, uh, we used uh, Lendell, okay, and Lendell was a kind of a kind of worked, but kind of didn't. It actually does a number of nice things. Um, it accepts like any kind because it uses GStream as backend, so it accepts any kind of video. It does nice. You can you can actually put live live titles over the top of the video. Um, you can it has a streaming plugin, so you can just stream it straight out. Um, it's just buggy and like to crash a lot. <laughs> so, like basically, it couldn't handle. Um, it was a program. It's all written in Python too. Um, I don't. Th that's the thing. We're not too sure. So <laughs> it wasn't seg. No, no, it wasn't seg folding crashes. It was. Um, what was it doing again? It was a few months. Ago, a few months since we looked at that one. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we'd want. That's that's ideally that's the reason why I'd like, you know, ideally something like Gallicaster with a with a switching plug-in would work great. Actually, it'd be I perfectly ideal 
it integrates into Matterhorn, it has a, a capture agent back end into Matterhorn, so um, all it needs is the, the ability to, instead of just having two streams, which is, you know, basically, and then it saves it out as just two streams, that it could just tee off those from those streams and then have a third third one with a switching switching capability. I, I have been looking at that. I have actually been looking at the code in Gallicaster to um, to do that because it's just it's just Python, so it's uh, it is doable. It just requires a requires a little bit of time to actually develop that. But I would definitely go for that because that basically doesn't you know it's. It's also well maintained software as well, like it's actively developed and it'd actually be a good you know, a good patch for it, you know, to actually be something that probably other people would be interested in as well. To have that switching. Mm. That's something that Yeah. No, it no. Absolutely not. No, no. They this the camera they haven't they've they've given us a list they've given us two cameras that can do D V. But also those one of those cameras at least does HDMI. Okay? And so HDMI is becoming more and more of a standard even on I think one of those cameras did SDI. They had an SDI interface, which is that, which is basically right. the professional. Yeah, it's. It. Yes. Yes, and that's what's going to happen basically after we and stop. Recording here. Yeah. That's right. Yes. I mean, if anything, using using the OpenCast Matterhorn backend in, instead of instead of Carl Carsten's Vapar is actually a lot better anyway. So, like in terms of configuration and the fact that it's just so easy to actually create a w what's called a workflow, which just basically a set of steps to. Yes. 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 Yes, because I'll, I'll show, and that'll be, that'll happen during dinner, so, like, it'll just upload. Well, no, it, I'll let it go and then come back after dinner and it should be ready. <laughs> so... Anyway, that's that's that concludes this talk.